TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The IDF launched a surprise exercise along its northern front as Jerusalem levels a threat to Beirut. Unidentified aircraft launch an aerial strike against Hezbollah infrastructure located within Syrian military bases in southern Syria. An investigation has been launched into a severe case of corruption in which Qatar allegedly bribed EU lawmakers and officials to further Doha's interest throughout the European continent. IDF, ISA or Shin Bet and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted extensive counterterrorism activity over the weekend as part of Operation Wastebreaker throughout the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria. As part of the operational activity, which included exchanges of fire between local militants and the Israeli troops, over 24 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended. And while a number of Palestinian casualties have been cited by local officials, no injuries were reported to the Israeli forces. Meanwhile, the IDF spokesperson's unit announced two surprise exercises along Israel's borders with Gaza, Lebanon and Syria, respectively. While the military exercise along the Gaza border, which the IDF said intends to elevate the level of preparedness of the Gaza division, lasted merely for several hours yesterday, the exercise along Israel's northern front, dubbed Warm Winter II, began on Saturday night and is scheduled to conclude tomorrow. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, the multi-arm exercise, which includes over 13,000 troops, aims to bolster the readiness of the IDF spear tip units and the array of their logistical support units for various scenarios which may erupt on the northern front. It is worth noting that while the IDF spokesperson's unit highlighted that the Warm Winter 2 exercise was pre-planned as part of the IDF's 2022 exercises, nearly several hours prior to the announced exercise, Israel reportedly leveled a threat to Lebanon, warning that it would strike Beirut International Airport if Hezbollah would use it to smuggle weaponry from Iran into the country. The reported threat, initially published by the London-based Ashar al Ausat daily, further cited an Israeli source as acknowledging an ongoing investigation over Tehran's attempt to smuggle weapons through civilian flights to Beirut airport. The source further highlighted that Israel will not be lenient if the investigation confirmed Iran's activities. Meanwhile, in Syria, unidentified aircraft reportedly launched an aerial strike on Hezbollah infrastructure located within Syrian military bases in the southern Aswaida governorate, causing extensive material damage. It is worth noting that while the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny Israel's alleged responsibility for the strike in response to TV7's request for comment, Prior to the reported strike, which was executed during the early hours of Sunday morning, the IDF dropped hundreds of leaflets in the vicinity of southern Kunetra, adjacent to the armistice line with Israel, warning Syrian officers not to cooperate with Hezbollah or face the consequences of Israel's iron fist. It is important to know that while the word Israel was not explicitly written, the insignia of the IDF's 210th Bashan Division, which maintains operational responsibility for the Syrian front, was inserted on the leaflet's upper left corner. Turning to the United Nations headquarters in New York, where the British ambassador to the UN warned that Moscow was seeking to obtain additional weaponry from the Islamic Republic of Iran to be used in Russia's war against Ukraine. Since August, Tehran has transferred hundreds of UAVs to Moscow, breaking international law. Russia has used those Iranian drones to kill civilians and illegally target civilian infrastructure, wiping out homes, electricity, power supply, schools, hospitals. Russia is now attempting to 
obtain more weapons, including hundreds of ballistic missiles. In return, in return, Russia is offering Iran an unprecedented level of military and technical support. We're concerned that Russia intends to provide Iran with more advanced military components, which will allow Iran to strengthen their weapons capability. Ambassador Woodward further highlighted that after a three-week hiatus, Russia has once again resumed use of Iranian drones in the Ukrainian theater, indicating yet another supply of Iranian drones has made its way to Russia. The comments by the British ambassador to the world body were made on Friday, prior to a UN Security Council session later that day, during which Russia's UN ambassador, Vasily Nebenzia, sought to frame the allegations voiced against Moscow and Tehran as Western conspiracies. Госпожа председатель, вряд ли нас сегодня обнадежит и выступление наших бывших западных партнеров. Все они предсказуемо будут пытаться сместить акцент, например, на необоснованные утверждения о якобы осуществляемых военных поставках из Ирана в Россию, которые мы уже неоднократно опровергали. Российский ВПК способен справиться с любыми задачами, и ни в чьей помощи мы не нуждаемся. А вот украинской военной промышленности практически не существует, и за нее работает ВПК западных государств. К тому же западные оружейные компании получают от этого огромные прибыли, лишаться которых ради установления мира они не намерены. Meanwhile, today the European Union held a foreign ministerial in Brussels, during which a fresh package of sanctions was once again adopted against Iran. Ahead of the meeting, EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell noted that he informed his Iranian counterpart of the European Union's intention on Friday, and while Tehran's top diplomat voiced outrage, the European institution highlighted the regime's brutal crackdown on Iranian protesters, which included a second execution and the supply of arms to Russia as the root cause for the European response. We are going to approve a very, very tough package of sanctions. It was not easy, it was not an easy conversation with uh, my colleague, the Foreign Affairs Minister in Iran, because we talk about uh, what's happening inside the country, the supply of arms to Russia, and these two people being executed. Iran has to understand that the European Union will condemn strongly and will take any action we can in order to support Iran women, to support the peaceful, peaceful demonstrators, and certainly rejection of, the, of this death penalty. The EU foreign policy chief was further asked about an evolving investigation into allegations of deep-rooted corruption in the European Parliament, in which Qatar, which is alleged to be a top financier of the Muslim Brotherhood, bribed members of the EU legislature to promote its own interests throughout of Europe. Look, as you said, apparently, apparently, I am not a judge, there is a, a process ongoing Certainly, the news are very worrisome, very, very worrisome. We are facing some events, some facts that certainly worries me as a former president of the European Parliament also. There is nothing and no one being referred to, neither from the external action service, nor from the delegations. We are not affected by that. There is a police and judiciary actions we have to follow these actions. We are very much certainly concerned about uh, this news, but I have, to, I have to act according not only with the facts, but the proven evidence. I cannot go below the judiciary statements. Belgian prosecutors announced that four people had already been arrested and charged with participation in a criminal organization, money laundering and corruption in their investigation, including Vice President of the European Union's Parliament, Eva Kaili, member of the left-wing PASOK party. Moreover, in addition to the three additional arrests, 16 homes of past and present EU lawmakers and parliamentary aides were raided by Belgian police, all of whom were identified by sources as members of the progressive and liberal left factions. Meanwhile, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen 
voiced outrage over the revelation and highlighted the need to ensure that the confidence of EU citizens is not lost. The allegations against the Vice President of the European Parliament uh, are of utmost concern, very serious. It is a question of confidence of people into our institutions, and um, this confidence and trust into our institutions needs higher standards and of independence and integrity. For us, it is very critical to have not only strong rules, but the same rules also covering all the European institutions and not to allow for any kind of exemptions. So it's a matter of transparency, it's a matter of very clear rules, and all the European institutions should abide to the same rules that we put in place. In response to the ongoing investigation and legal proceedings vis-à-vis -vis Qatar's bribery of European lawmakers, the Qatari Foreign Ministry released a statement which reads, quote, The state of Qatar categorically rejects any attempts to associate it with accusations of misconduct. Any association of the Qatari government with the reported claims is baseless and gravely misinformed. The state of Qatar works through institution-to-institution -institution engagement and operates in full compliance with international laws and regulations. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavua Mevorach and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.